Wagger when they came to Crow Park. And here it is, the Sam Maguire Cup is back in Dublin for a second year. Tony Hanahaw, the captain, was an anti-climax, Tony. No, indeed, it was not, Mick. I, I wasn't satisfied or I didn't relax until the last whistle went. I'd like to say to our man, you know, hard luck. It must be hard coming up the first time and being beaten by so much. But they should take encouragement. They've shown great guts throughout the campaign, and I'm sure they'll be back again in the near future. I think they shouldn't be disheartened. We lost after winning one and you had to come back, back but again. Dublin were the exceptions to that rule. Well, we like to think we're the exceptions to all rules. <laughs> <laughs> the excitement was fantastic, even in the training sessions on the week prior to the All Island final. It was most enjoyable and uh, something to be remembered forever. This, I suppose, could really be the David and Goliath of modern football. I faintly remember the canal end where it was just a sea of saffron when we came out, but again, we could get comfort by looking up the far end and looking at the hill. Tom McCreesh to take the free for Armagh. We got a uh, free kick and uh, I kicked it straight out the centre of the field. Bad kick, unfortunately, and uh, it went straight to Brian Mullins. The game had only started, Brian got the ball and he kicked it into the corner towards the hill 16 for myself. I was in there with Tom McCreesh. Now Tom was in front of me, Tom gathered the ball, but I'd say because it was a greasy ball, he dropped it. I slipped and let it fall, and it's history since then. So I picked the ball up and I looked over at the goal, and I, I was at a very acute angle, so I decided to go for point. But luckily for me, uh, Brian McLinden had come off his line. Uh, I underkicked the ball, went over Brian's head into the corner of the net, and it was a goal. Oh! I never discussed it with Jimmy, while well, Jimmy is a very good friend of mine and I know him extremely well and know him going back to the early 60s. You know what I mean? It wasn't a, a sort of a daunting task to me to be playing against Jimmy Keaveney on the day, but um, I, I don't have a feel that he, he thought he could score a goal from the angle at which he was at. Like It was a complete fluke, but as I say, I got about 20 years good mileage out of that. About a minute and a half gone on the game and Jimmy Keaveney sending that one in from a most that's the one last, that'll do well. You have that part, have you? It took a long time before the truth came out. What an expensive skill that was by Tom McCree. For a long, long time after, I can remember, I got it very difficult to move out, but a, a few of my good friends rang me up and sort of told me like that it was just a game and forget about it. And uh, I suppose they felt I was entitled to one mistake. <laughs> Once it came to half time, the second half started, I knew we weren't in any danger of getting caught that day. We won quite comfortably in the end. Dublin are everywhere. This time it's Bernard Crowe. And now it's Brian Mullins. And now it's Jimmy Keaveney. And another goal! It certainly was the biggest disappointment. I, I don't know do many people realise what it's like to get beaten in an All Ireland final. And I can always remember, uh, you know, what I mean, the sadness and the grief when the final whistle goes and you suddenly realise that your dream of a lifetime has been lost. Jimmy Keaveney, with a total of two goals and six points, has set a new personal record in an All Ireland final. My own father, God be good, was at the match. He was a Belfast man and he had my wife there who was a cabin woman, and my eldest daughter, who was only a little tot at the time. So I made arrangements, said after the game, that I said, look, win or lose, I'll go up to the, his local pub was the Commodore up in Santa. I said, I'll go up there, I'll have a point chance after the match. Part and carry, you know, when my father was there, I got a few friends of his, and they were all saying, well done, Jimmy, congratulations to you. So I look around, and I see the missus in the corner with my little daughter. She's an Armagh Hatner. The daughter has a little Armagh flag. Now, you imagine how I felt. Here's Jimmy Keaveney, the man who made all Ireland history today. I just let her roll, what the hell is your game? Well, she says, it'd be nice to see somebody else when you've won a few already yourself.